Hello everyone, let us see the analysis of Wipro. Why Wipro? Because Indian IT industry is now in a stress situation and most of the IT sector is going backwards. All the big uh, shareholders, especially the hedge funds have forced the Indian IT companies to buy back their shares. In a manner of uh, speaking, they have been forced to liquidate their reserves so that they are in no position to aggressively follow M&A activity by taking over uh, strong companies, good companies in US and overseas markets so that their position can be strengthened there. So now our companies have become weakened. Now, what are the other options available for these IT companies? When you examine this particular aspect, we find that Wipro has come out with a completely a diversified strategy, a diversification strategy, a conglomerate diversification strategy for its uh, uh, future operations. That means it has tried to reduce the share of IT and the, in the company's uh, portfolio of uh, bouquet of offerings and uh, decided to increase FMCG offerings. So it has found out that in India, now that America is going to slowly and slowly close its doors to Indian uh, IT companies. So the Wipro as a company, if it has to survive, it has to find out other areas where the uh, business will come from. Now one of the biggest areas in India where you can get business is FMCG companies because most of the FMCG companies have made tons and tons of money and there is a lot of unsatiated uh, demand in Indian rural uh, side. So that uh, set apart, that is that being said, now let us examine what are the different financial ratios of uh, Wipro over the last 3-4 years and then see how it has uh, worked out and how it is going to go forward from here onwards. Now debt equity ratio uh, is uh, from, uh, it was 0.22 in March 2012 and has come down to 0.17 in March 2016. That means in Wipro as a company has got very, very little debt and it has got a very large headroom, very large headroom. It can go up to maybe five times uh, 5.0, from 0.17 to 5.0. So that much of uh, availability or the headroom is there for the company to undertake a very fast growth in FMCG uh, area by taking on debt on itself. So this is a very good uh, chance, very good opportunity and that it has saved its uh, headroom for future. Second thing is long term debt equity. What is the long term? It is 0 0.03. Total debt equity is 0 0.17 and long term debt equity is 0 0.03. And it does not have uh, any long term debt at all. Only the short term debt is the only thing that it has, whatever it has. Now let us see the current ratio. What is the current ratio? Current ratio is 1.66. Uh, in 2012, which has come to 1.51 in 2013 and slowly increased to 1.95 in March 2016. So it is a very good uh, acceptable range above 1.33 for uh, even, if in, even if it is to be treated as an FMCG company, 1.95 is a good uh, current ratio. Now what are the proportion of fixed assets? As you see in IT companies, the proportion of fixed assets will be very less. So it is now 3.83 in 2012 to 4.52 in 2016. There is not much of uh, fixed assets that to worth speaking of. Now, if the company wants to get into FMCG and uh, on a large scale, then it has to increase the amount, number of fixed assets, the proportion of fixed assets as a part of its total assets. That will definitely come about. And there is a lot of headroom here. Only 4.5% is the fixed asset ratio. Now, what is the inventory? Inventory in IT companies is a very nebulous concept. There is not much of inventory. We can take this inventory to be related to the FMCG activity of the Wipro company. So if you take it that way, then naturally we will examine how it works out. So in March 2012, it is 42 and it has gone up to 141 in 2014 and then come down to 88 in March 2016. That means there was a lot of unsold inventory in March 2014. March 2014, 13-14 was the worst year for the Wipro because it could not sell most of its goods. Now it has come again down to 88 inventory. So it still has a long way to go in reducing the inventory. Now let us see the debtors, how the debtors are functioning. Okay, and the debtors are about in March 2012, 4.63 and it has remained at 5.3 in March 2016. It is roughly from 4.5 to 5.5. 5. 
in the range of 4.5 to 5. That is the data ratio. That is a very, very manageable level. Okay. Then March 2012, what is the interest coverage ratio? Now, if you have debt, if you have debt no, though debt is less, then we will have to see the interest cover ratio. It will definitely be, will be good. Let us see what exactly it is. It is around 10 times in March 2012, has gone up to 30 times in March 2015, and then 20 point, 21 times in March 2016. It's much, much above the requirements anyway. Now, PBI DTM margin. PBI DT margin. What is the PBI DT margin? How much? What is the margin uh, total ca cash generated by the company? The margin is around 22.86 percent in March 2012, and uh, it has gone up to 28 percent in March 2015, and come down to 26.58 percent marginal in March 2016. But still, PBI DT at 26, about 25 percent, is good enough. Then PBI TM. That is the pa up Apart from the de depreciation, they don't have any fixed assets worth the name. But even then, if you remove the depreciation, the um, PBIT margin comes to uh, roughly uh, slightly one degree lesser, 24.64. And PBDTM, uh, removing, removing the interest, it does also doesn't have any debt also, not much, not much of fixed assets, not much of debt. And then its uh, PBIDTM will comes to 25.40. That means roughly 25, around 25, this uh, uh, say cash generation, revenue generation is an acceptable range. And then, then cash, uh, uh, CPM is about 20% 20 and APATM is about 18% and return on capital employed, ROCE, ROCE is about 23% in March 2012 and uh, it has gone up to 30% in March 2014 and come down to 24, 25% in March 2016. And return on net worth, return on net worth is another uh, measure that we have to see apart from the capital employed. Return on net worth is around 20.5 in March 2012, went up to 27.5 in March 2014, and come down to 21.45 in March 2016. So return on capital employed, return on uh, the net worth are uh, in the range of 21.5 to 24.5 which is also again an acceptable range. So, with these uh, data, we can definitely say for sure that Wipro will be a good and a possibly strong competitor in FMCG because it has got a lot of headroom both in taking debt, in debt equity, in interest coverage and then the uh, revenue generation uh, ratios. So, please invest in Wipro for uh, next three years uh, out with a three years of